So in this video, we're just looking at a very interesting question. So we're proving nR being added to n choose r minus 1 is equal to n plus 1 choose r. This is a very interesting question. So pay particular attention. Let's move step by step. So if you've dealt with a binomial coefficients already feel free to just pause this and just try it out so I'll not use my notes I'll try to be real so that you basically understand how you'd go about it if you find it in an exam on your own okay so for the first part we already know what that means so that means n factorial over the difference which is like n minus r factorial and then of course r factorial plus n factorial over r minus 1 factorial now think about this <coughs> um, if you look at it let's assume we want to basically get to add the two okay I already explained the basic ideas about the coefficients of the factorial already so that you basically get the concept now I've already there's something that I've already forgotten out of there's a mistake I've made here okay so it is the n on top minus what is on the bottom on the bottom we have r minus 1 right so minus r minus 1 and then of course factorial and then r minus 1 factorial as well just like we've done on the first part n factorial on top on the bottom the difference and then also r factorial itself okay thank you for that observation <coughs> so now I can simplify it to the next step n factorial so n factorial of um, n minus r factorial r factorial plus n factorial now if we do subtract what's in the bracket there r will become negative 1 will become positive so you have n minus r plus a 1 factorial r minus 1 factorial now the beauty about this is I'm sure at this point you've already observed something common, right? You've observed something common about what we have. If you check the first two brackets, they are deleted in set in a certain way. The one on the right is just one higher than the other. And then again, if you compare R and R minus one, one is just higher, right? By one. So R itself is higher. R minus one is less by a one. So we can somehow expand the bigger ones so that they can showcase the other one. What I mean by that is we'll apply this. We know that the let me start with R. R is bigger than R minus one. Okay? So I can expand the bigger one which is R. So R factorial. Let me use a different car here. So R factorial is basically equal to I can expand it by reducing by one R minus one factor. And then this one is bigger by one. I can also say N minus R plus one factorial is also equal to N minus R itself plus a one. If I reduce it by a one, it will give us what? It will give us the one is going to disappear, so it will be n minus r factorial. So you understand why I've done all that. So I'll leave the top part. So I'll expand. So we have n factorial over. Now, why is uh, r factorial? We'll put that. So we we'll maintain n minus r. Now we said r factorial is bigger, so it is we can expand it as r r minus one factorial. 
plus. The other side, n factorial is to be maintained on top. Now this part has been expanded. Okay, so it's equal to n minus r plus one, and then if you reduce it by one, it gives you just n minus r factor. And then don't forget you have r minus one appearing as well. So I've just substituted on the part where I've got r and the part where of n minus r plus one. We've expanded them by reducing by one, just like we said. If you have seven factorial, it is the same as seven times seven minus one factorial, which is of course six factorial. Okay, so we're just using the binomial coefficients uh, principles. I also I meant to say factorial notations. <coughs> At this point, uh, we can factorize something that is things that we can notice that they're common. I can see on top we have n factors is common. On the bottom, what do you think is common? I can see this part is common. That's the reason why we're expanding to come up with some common terms. And then I can see r minus one factor is also common. So we'll start with n minus r factorial, and then we have r minus one factorial. Those are the two things that are common on the bottom. Then on top, of course, we've already factorized any factor. So we have a one for the first part. So for the second, for the first part, if you are to remove these from the bottom, what only remains is r plus. For the other part, if you remove the other two, only this part, only that guy will remain. So it's one n minus r plus a one. Okay, so we've just like <coughs> dealt with that guy. So at this point, we can try to to simplify what is in the brackets. Okay, so of course we understand we need to come up with a common denominator and all that. So what's a common denominator if we were to look at the at the two there? So we have r multiplied by n minus r plus 1. Okay, so it's standing out on top. So r into this, we just get n minus r plus 1. And then if you divide that, you get r, so plus r. So you're noticing that on top, the r will cancel out, so that you remain with n plus 1 over r, and then multiply by n minus r plus plus one. Now at this point things have started making sense. At least we can see that the n plus one has, has appeared, but we are not yet there. So in the brackets, we've already simplified that. So hoping on your paper you would have gone on the next step. So I'll just substitute that for the sake of simplicity. So we have n plus one over r n minus r plus one after adding what was what had remained in the brackets after factorization. So and then I can move this a bit up so that we can try to see if we can simplify it further. Okay. <coughs> so I'm trying to simplify this to what is of course to just give you an idea the right answer there is expected to be something like this. <coughs> right hand side is expected to be of course it is n plus 1 r so applying the same concept it's supposed to be n plus 1 factorial over n plus 1 minus the r factorial and then r factorial so that's our goal now for our left hand side at the point where we've reached right now what can we do So n factor times n plus one. <coughs> Think about it. Be smart about it. You have n plus one in brackets multiplied by n factor. 
what can you observe? Now, n factorial or n is just less if you compare to n plus 1. So if you combine the two, they are equal to n plus 1 factorial. Because I can use n plus 1 by 1, which gives me n. What I'm trying to say is 7 times 6 factorial is the same as 7 factorial. So on the top part, if you want on your paper on the next step, you can even show, you say n plus 1 in brackets, multiply by n factorial. Denominator, equal, you have to be smart about it. So what we have on the denominator part? So I've got r multiplying by r minus 1 derivative as well and then the other part as well derivative we have n minus r plus a 1 multiplied by n minus r factorial also derivative grouped together that should be equal to now the top part I've already shown you to say if you combine them get the bigger one so n plus 1 factorial the denominator part if you compare r and r minus 1 it r is just less by a 1 so again it if you combine them it just be r factorial and then this other one this is greater than greater by 1 as well so if you reduce by 1 it goes to that so you can also just get the bigger one which is like n minus r plus 1 factor. So at this point, on the next step, just arrange them properly. Okay? But all in all, the top part is matching up. And then it says that the R can go just, which is of course multiplication is uh, commutative. It doesn't matter why I've placed it. And then inside there, negative R and positive 1 can just be exchanged. That's still the same. So, on your conclusion, you can say since the left hand side is equivalent to the right hand side, and it's proven that that is basically true. So, we've just used the expo with an understanding of our binomial coefficients and the factorial notations to basically get to that result.